Film photography is a process that involves a reaction between light and a light sensitive medium. This is a camera. Let's say you want to take a picture of your house and the sun is reflecting light off of the house. When you take a picture, the shutter opens and allows light in. Now the film inside the camera is exposed by the light. This plastic strip known as the film is composed of six layers. The first layer is a scratch resistant coating that protects the layers below. Next is a light sensitive layer known as emulsion, which consists of gelatin and silver halide crystals. Silver halide is a compound composed of silver and one of the halogens, in this case silver bromide. Next is the adhesive layer that binds it to the film base. The film base is a firm but flexible plastic that provides support. The base is backed by another adhesive bond with an anti halation coating. If you were to zoom into one of the light sensitive crystals in the emulsion, you would see that the crystals have a cubic structure. In there, there are silver ions and bromide ions. Silver ions have one electron less than an uncharged silver atom, making it a positive charge. And bromide ions have an extra electron, giving it a negative charge. These electrical attractions hold them in place in a cubical arrangement. In addition of these two ions, there are sensitivity specks in the crystal. These irregularly shaped objects or imperfections are essential to the image forming process. If a crystal was a perfect structure lacking any irregularities, it would not react to light. Photons are a quantity of electromagnetic energy that behave like tiny particles of light. This is what is happening when a halide crystal is exposed to light. Photons of light emitted from a light source gives its energy to a bromide ion's extra electron subsequently lifting it to a higher energy level. With the energy, the negatively charged electron roams around the structure of the crystal until it reaches a sensitivity peck. When the electron reaches the sensitivity peck, its electrical attraction pulls a positively charged free silver ion to it. As additional photons of light strike bromide ions and release electrons, more silver ions migrate to the sensitivity speck where it joins the electrons to balance the electrical charge. This process makes them silver metal. The activated crystals represent the captured image, however at this stage you are not able to see the image of the film. Although they are not visible to our eyes, the presence of these several metallic silver atoms at a sensitivity speck or simply just clumps create a latent image. This is a starting point for the conversion of the whole crystals to silver during development. In processing film, you need a dark room, red light, developer, stop bath, fixer, and water. In a dark room, we only use red light because it is the only color of light considered to be safe, meaning the only color of light that would not clump up the crystals in the film. Red light has a low frequency. As a result, it has less amount of energy per photon. Since the amount of energy in the photon of red light is too small, the electron will not have enough energy to escape from the bromide ion no matter how many photons strike the surface. Remember when a photon emitted from a light source that was not red? There was enough energy from the photon that provided the electron to roam around and reach the sensitivity speck attracting the positive silver ion. Well, since red light does not have a high enough frequency to release electrons, there are no clumps or densities built up. To not expose film or paper that would activate the crystals, it is essential to only use red light in a dark room. In the first step of processing, the film is placed in a solution known as the developer. In the developer or the reducing agent, millions of exposed crystals are converted from silver ions to silver metal. This transforms the latent image to metallic silver, creating the visible photographic image. Next, you put the film into the stop bath tray. This is an acidic chemical that stops the development process by neutralizing the alkaline developer. The next tray contains the fixer. This solution removes the unexposed and unactivated bromide ions. This only removes silver halide crystals leaving its converted form silver metals behind. Finally, you put the film in the tray with water to clean the film and remove all the processing chemicals. These chemical processes result a record of the camera's view in which the area of the film struck by the most light are darkened by metallic silver while the areas struck by no light remain transparent since they contain no silver, and shades of grey are created in the intermediate areas that have varying amounts of silver. These variation in density allows you to recognize the film as a negative. Now you want to print the negative onto photographic paper. In this process, you are reversing the negatives using an enlarger. 
Just as the film had emulsion on a clear plastic base, photographic paper has emulsion on a whole paper base. To develop the latent image, the photographic paper goes through the same chemical process. Photographic prints are made by exposing paper to light projected through a negative. The amount of light that reaches the paper varies depending on the density of the negative. Areas where more clumps were built because more light was exposed result in a dark, thick density image which allows less light to be projected through a negative. Therefore, that particular area of the paper remained unexposed and light. Areas that are thin or transparent because it was an area with less or no light had headlight crystals removed by the fixer. Thin areas of a negative are rendered as dark areas in the print. Therefore, the print produces the original subject rendering a positive image.